Have you ever looked at your city and occasionally thought, wow, this place is boring? Well, I have, but this is the story of how that changed. Yeah, it's, it's quite unique to have something that's just trying to express like climbing anywhere, everywhere for all of us. Because climbing has a lot of quite strict rules that we've arbitrarily set, you know, in terms of grade, style, ethics, sit, start, stand, start. This guidebook is more just like, go out, express yourself on the wall, wherever you are, whenever you are, just go climb. Because, I mean, in the end, that's what most climbers want to do. Like, we just want to move on the wall. But then these rules kind of help guide us. And this guidebook just does it in such a pure way, you know, of just wanting us to be out there climbing. I just think it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's really cool. All right, enough out of this hippie's mouth. We all know climbing isn't just that. There's always grades to mark your skill. There's competitions. And I guess most notably of all, mega hard ascents to help grow that sweet, sweet tick list. Well, today I wanted to take you on a journey through the city of Bern that opened my eyes to what climbing can be and also what it used to be. However, firstly I want to talk about movement. Climbing is, like this hippie said, a lot about discovering new movement. But then again, so are a lot of other sports, and if we take parkour for example, it's about finding difficult moves, practicing at an easier level, and then getting ready for the real challenge. Ultimately, it's about conquering your physical and mental body and achieving a move or sequence that you thought was above your limit. Now, this is all starting to sound a lot like another sport we all know and love. Well, the difference lies a lot in our approach towards measurable, graded goals. 6A, 7A, 8A, our sport is built on this idea that every climb's difficulty is tangible, and we define our achievements and sport on this. It's a reasonable thing to do, but is it really the best thing for us as climbers? What about the remaining 98% of the sport, the collection of skills, moves, the community, and so on? In my opinion, that's where the real magic starts to happen. And this is where the story starts to take place, and the reason I was in Bern to begin with. I got a strange message from my friend Hannah Morris, who had found a guidebook about climbing in the city. Now let's explore what this book has to offer. Now the guidebook in itself is a piece of art. It was designed in the end of the 90s and early 2000s by Dr. Berry and Dr. Bomb, who had started to pave the way for local climbers with all the best spots clearly marked out. Now because it was in the middle of the city, climbing on buildings was of course the primary targets, which can create a bit of a kerfuffle with the authorities. Because of this, they had marked each boulder area with a main indication, which they called the legality scale. And much like a climbing grade scale, this was designed to give the climber an idea of how legal it was to climb there. There was the legal, which means you might get asked to leave, but it's fine to climb. The fast legal, which was a spot where you're not really welcome. And lastly, watch your back, the grade that means get the F out quickly should the cops arrive. Now let's get the night started at the Blue Turm. The Tower of Blood seemed to be one of the main spots, and sort of the first thing you go to when bouldering in Bern. We met up with a crew of local climbers and started exploring some of the lines in the guidebook, which offered around a dozen separate lines, and all of which had something unique to offer, you could say. I ended up on this link-up that required a lot more complex movement and precision than you might expect from climbing on a building. Classic. All the movements on there was like a perfect boulder. It's elegant, like that mono switch, thumb press, the pressing in the corner, like you don't even find that on real rock. It's so much fun. Looking forward to seeing more of these. But it's starting off very exciting. <laughs> something that always strikes me is this this concept of vision in climbing. Just seeing something and being like, yeah, that I want to do. Like that's something I just want to get up, I want to understand it. And I feel like what they've been exploring here and, and, and documenting is exactly that. They see just a line somewhere, I'm like, yeah, we can move there. We can create that and make it into climbing. What did you just tell me? Um, there is like a, a big door mm -hmm. with like a four, four meter okay. uh, thin, thin hand. Like hand jams, hand jams proper hand yeah. jams. With a, 
Look, it's like oh shit, a little bit, little bit slippery, but but, Wait, it, but it's nice. It's blood and gore. <laughs> The hand jam. The hand jam. The crack. Oh, this is so perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, my name is. Nice yeah, boy. Seven. Come on. Oh, my you got it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Emil. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> 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 Michael, bring my crack gloves actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna go get those. <laughs> the crack gloves are on. Now let's get this freaking door. It actually is really cool because it expands as you climb on it. So if you get enough force in there, I think you can like expand it into a jug. <laughs> See if it's possible. <laughs> Come on, Emil. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. You got it. Come on. Come on, come on. Just one more, come on. Success. You almost slipped there at the top. Yeah, I felt the feet sliding down, but I figured out some minor technical skills on it. How to get slightly more in it. And also, like, I just uh, accepted that the feet are trash. So instead of like trying to do good foot jamming techniques, I was just putting them in there and going. And it worked, because the hand jams were okay enough. <laughs> Crack is done, but there's still one more line that I saw on this one. A run and jump, very parkour style boulder. Like there's nothing on the wall aside from these crimps in the middle of it, and it's really high up. up so let's get to it. It's like one and a half emils tall. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard. Like I think this is gonna be, a, I'm gonna have to commit fully channel my inner Toby Sagar and just give it my all. You going for the big one? I think that's the easiest to focus on one and just get like one hand in it and hold it. So close! Oh, you touched so close, it. I touched, touched it. it. Yeah, yeah, I touched it. I think I could. Get a bit of pull on it. Next go. Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! To me, this was the perfect confluence between parkour and climbing, and also where it hit me. Climbing here in Bern started out as a form of parkour, and it's something that I think we can learn from today. The environment, the gear, the people with chalk just showed that it's a climbing crag, but the movements said parkour. Somehow, the limitations of our grades, rules, and many other things that disrupts the flow of this in climbing was gone, and what remained was something really beautiful. It's your turn, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> With this mindset, we kept following the trail of Dr. Berry and Dr. Bomb, as well as their guidebook, ultimately ending up in a children's playground in the middle of the night. Yeah, oh, here we have a place for a bolt. We have so like the, a yeah, this, this is, I guess, where you can put up holes. There's one as well. Oh, here's one, yeah. See, this is how safe it is. You can use this on your own ability. So this is probably, it's gonna be a legal one on the scale. So very legal. <laughs> Top out slide. <laughs> Big ass Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Boulder is done. Ready for the public's opinion. Is it a classic or not? I guess we'll see. But it's up on the wall for future generations to appreciate. 
in this wonderful little dinosaur playground. Such a sick thing to climb here. It's like, I just get so psyched just because it's, I don't even know what it is, but it's just movement and it's hard and it's like, it just gets me so motivated. Woo. See how the others are doing. Yes! Come on, come on, stay on, stay on. Keep tight, keep tight. Use the hips, yeah, perfect. So good, come on. Come on, around the corner, yes! Yes! That's so good. This is the crack. This is Bunker Geflunker. Bunker Yeah, what, what? Oh, Bunker Mitchif. Yeah, we're at a safe, uh, like, legal spot though, so it, it shouldn't be too flunctious. But this is a hard one, a difficult boulder. And it's a, it's a dino, much like this dino right here. <laughs> One of the things that's kind of sick about it is how much it becomes like a very normal climb. I mean, the absurdity of starting on a handlebar that's in a door going out to this like very concrete edge that doesn't really, you know, if you just look at it, it's just a door, it's just an opening. And then it ends up being like a three star line, at least the like, dino into the crimp is a proper move, like something I would love to climb both in a gym and outdoors. And I don't know, just having this like, Right here, having somebody who found this, wrote it down in a guidebook, and then for us to enjoy, that's just, that's a beautiful thing. But yeah, I'm psyched to explore some more of this beautiful city of Bern. See what else we have here. We continued to explore Bern using our chalk, our psych, and our guidebook to help guide us through the city. We scaled some castle walls, some beautiful crack features, and some very, very strange structures, all situated in front of our eyes as our night progressed. But it wasn't until I got back home to Stockholm that I realized what an impact this adventure had had on me. I started to see the rural structures of my city with a completely new eye. The arets on my way to the grocery store, the incredible flat wall that I biked past hundreds of times but never really given the thought to climb. And I realized that it's time to give it a go and start exploring my own city as well through climbing. I think one thing that I very much appreciated was seeing how psyched everybody was for each other for like just <laughs> just climbing you know like there was no difference or even more of a positive difference than if you're at the crack like everybody was just enjoying themselves so so much come on Emil remember come on you can do it you really want completely detached nice. from like grades rules limitations just because it's such a, f a very very free form of climbing it's just literally if you want to climb you climb otherwise you chill back have a beer do something else so it's just it's just incredibly pure and everybody was enjoying that pure form of climbing together but also in their own way you know 